will not be long before you come across footage of a UFO in the skies over Jerusalem. Now it is sparking intense debate on the Internet. Trace Gallagher following this live from our West Coast News. So the question is, what was that UFO? What was it doing over Jerusalem? And, you know, is he back? Yeah, and that is the question, by the way, Megan, because, you know, critics, it's, it's difficult for them to dismiss this because there are so many different angles. We've got four different videos, all from various perspectives, uh, showing this light above the Dome on the Rock. In Jerusalem, the Temple Mound, of course, we know which is a holy site for both uh, Jews and Muslims. You see the shining ball of light, right? It's above there. It's kind of, well, they just froze it and I really can't see it now. But there it is right there. It's at the top of the screen. Yeah. It's up there and it hovers, kind of a pulsating orb. And then hold on here because this thing starts going down right toward, you see it there, going down toward the Dome of the Rock and the Temple Mount. And then it stops and it hovers there for a while. It kind of sits there, and then all of a sudden it shoots straight back up into the air. Whoa. Now, experts say this would be kind of an indication this is an unmanned. There it is. You saw it right saw there. It. it shot straight back up in the air. Yeah. It's kind of hard to see, but it shot up in the air, and the experts think that, you know, it's an unmanned vehicle, they believe. It could be a drone, but they do not know of anything like this in the Israeli army. Um, so they say this is either incredible video or some very well orchestrated hoax. Some have said maybe this is a movie uh, that's a, you know putting out this this uh, I don't know what do you put out if your movie a trailer or some kind of a a hoax to try and promote a movie that's yet to be named we don't know could be Jacob's ladder biblical thing where Jacob's ladder you know was the, the Jews and the Christians believe Jacob's ladder who he saw it in a dream leads from the Temple Mount. I thought that was a thriller that, that, that went very scary. <laughs> that's, that's what one of the producers said. Yeah. I saw that movie. No, I'm Thank talking you about the biblical. Up. You bet. What do you guys think? What was that? I mean, it's one thing it just comes down, but then it goes back up. The UFO hovers over one of the holiest sites in Islam, the Dome of the Rock on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, the spot where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven, built on top of a site sacred to Judaism. An American woman takes it all in her stride, seen it all before. We had, we've seen them in Mississippi like this, but never like this. Yeah, Easily dismissed as a hoax until you see this. The same event, or so it seems, filmed from a different angle by someone else. The glowing ball of light dropping until it hangs just over the dome of the rock. These spectators a little more impressed. Whoa! <laughs> the ball suddenly shooting off as if disturbed. If it's a hoax, it's very well done. We are not alone, or are we? The Bible says that the heavens declare the glory of God. In Isaiah, in Joel, in the Gospels, in Revelations, 
about there will be signs in the sun and the moon where the sun would turn to sackcloth and the moon would turn to blood. The scientific website, NASA, has 5,000 years of eclipses, several thousand years in the past, thousands of years in the future. And the reason why is because God is very mathematical. He set up uh, everything like his own personal watch, his own time clock. And so I wanted to see if there were any significant solar lunar eclipses over the next five or six years. In 2014 and 2015, there were four total lunar eclipses in a row. Well, how often does that happen? So I went back uh, to NASA's website in history and I noticed there were not four blood moons in a row at all in the 1800s, in the 1700s, or in the 1600s. So I thought, wow, this is, might be something unique. And then I noticed it happened twice in the 1900s. Israel become a nation in 1948, and then you have these four blood moons in 1949 and 1950. And then in 1967 and 1968, to have Israel uh, recapture Jerusalem, the holy city, to have it back in their hands. But I went ahead and went back to 2014 and 2015, and I was looking at the dates. These series of eclipses are truly astronomical, to have these events happen, and then also tied to what prophetically the Bible says is gonna be happening with Israel. During these next two years, not only four blood moons, but a total solar eclipse, a partial solar eclipse. And when it comes to sending signals, God wants to work according to his calendar, not ours. We know when they fall on the feast days, God is trying to tell us something. I don't think anybody in this room can begin to really understand the kinds of signs that's about to start taking place. God usually chooses signs because signs shake people up. When signs happen in Israel, that's one thing, but God talking about signs, that's international signs to the nations of the world. A meteor comes in over Russia and all the news channels gets the tape and all the news media, they all put that meteorite coming in over Russia and they said that that thing probably weighed 10,000 tons. It broke windows for miles, and it was a sign. And God says that he's going to move through signs. I can't tell you that something is going to happen on the blood red moon. I certainly believe that it's going to be, and I believe it's going to be earth shaking. The headline read, Their God Changes the Path of Our Rockets in Midair, said a terrorist. Now, that's not a headline you see every day. The article said, One of the terrorists from Gaza was reported to say when asked why they couldn't aim their rockets more effectively, We do aim them, but their God changes their path in midair. Now, that's an amazing thing to see in print. But in a court of law, it would be called hearsay evidence. Still, it raises a fascinating question. Why haven't there been more casualties in Israel during the current conflict with Hamas? Most would say the credit should go to the Iron Dome, a miracle of modern science that strikes down 90% of missiles it targets. But National Security Specialist David Axe doesn't believe the 90% number. For Reuters, he wrote, Israel's vaunted Iron Dome defense system is more like an iron sieve. It fails to destroy all but a few of the rockets that Hamas and other Palestinian militant groups fire at Israeli communities. Even if Iron Dome's success rate really is 90%, that leaves a failure rate of 10%. Admittedly, the Hamas missile men are not the best. Their failed rockets have hit Al-Shifa Hospital, 
Al Shati refugee camp and other places inside of Gaza. Of course, compliant reporters at the hospital scene immediately blamed Israel for both events. Once the truth came out that the missiles did not come from Israel, but Hamas, very few corrected their original error, of course. All of this might lead you to believe that the 10% that got through just happened to mispopulated areas. But the fact is, Iron Dome only targets missiles with a trajectory and velocity that will take them into populated or strategic areas of Israel. So if Iron Dome actually missed 10% of the missiles that are headed directly for populated areas, why haven't there been more casualties in Israel? Well, whether he's changing the path of Hamas rockets in midair or something else, I believe the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob really is at work. There's an Iron Dome battery commander who believes it, too. This commander told an Israeli news site, We fired the first interceptor. It missed. Second, it missed. This is very rare. I was in shock. At this point, we had just four seconds until the missile lands. We had already notified emergency services to converge on this target location and had warned of a mass casualty incident. Suddenly, Iron Dome, which calculates wind speeds among other things, shows a major wind coming from the east, a strong wind that sends the missile into the sea. We were all stunned. I stood up and shouted, there's a God. I witnessed this miracle with my own eyes. It was not told or reported to me. I saw the hand of God send that missile into the sea. The Bible never says that reborn Israel would have an easy time. In fact, it warns of extremely rough roads ahead. A missile might at some point in the future strike Israel in a vulnerable area. But in this round of fighting so far, against all odds, none have. Shalom Chabrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We are here, actually outside of the King David Hotel, and in the background, though, is the YMCA. The Mekodesha, part of the Mekodesha, is actually being held right here in the very building, the basketball court in the background. But it is an interfaith ecumenical movement that's going on. And when I say ecumenical, my wife actually had a chance to speak to one of the gentlemen here in the building behind where a confession is going on. We were allowed to slip up and look inside. He was kind enough to allow us to look inside. We did look inside. We could see quite a few tables inside. People were circled around the tables there, but we could tell real quick like they did not appreciate him bringing us up there. Even though they didn't know who we were or anything, they didn't want anybody to know. They didn't want any media coverage whatsoever. But my wife asked him more, pressed him to try to get an idea of what's going on. And he says, it is a faceless gathering, religious gathering, an ecumenical movement. It is the Mekodeshet, as the sign says right in front of the Y. But the confession is what really caught our attention. What were they confessing about? And he said, our sins, the sins that we have committed. No doubt, it's speaking about the religious sins, the sins that for some reason, Israel must confess. As he stated, they're all speaking in Hebrew, but yet it was Jews, Muslims, and Christians all in the same building, but they didn't want anybody to know anything about Hello, it. Hello guys, this is Yana from Jerusalem, and I wanna report on something really strange that happened just a few minutes ago. This is YMCA, and, I, and this is where the Mekodeshet meeting was going on tonight. And I had a young man by name Ali who introduced himself to me as a producer of this uh, show that, or, or event that was going on tonight. And I asked him if I could get inside and, and see what this is about. And I asked him some questions about nature of this meeting. Uh, as you know, we came here to record 
of what's going on with this interfaith meeting in Jerusalem and so far it's been so hushed up I mean no media coverage no journalists anywhere and Ali this young man told me that this is an interfaith meeting of Jews Christians and Muslims and he told me that he will allow me to have a peek in a door so and as I was walking up the stairs, I met four people that were guarding the entrance. Uh, they were not very happy to see me, but indeed Ali was kind enough to let me peek inside. Uh, I saw an extremely quiet room full of people sitting around circle tables. Uh, some kind of person inside saw me and he was coming forward and wanted to close the door as soon as possible so I wasn't allowed inside or anything so I asked Ali what's really happening what are these people doing well he reported to me that they are confessing they're confessing sins and I asked him what kind of sins who sins and to who well he told me that these people here have been collecting sins of people in Jerusalem and they wrote them down and now they're sitting around these circle tables confessing sins of people that they collected and wrote down uh, that was just the strangest thing I kept asking him further for more information but he at this point just kind of thought I'm too nosy I guess and he just really wanted me out of here and he would not let me know anything anymore. Let me share with you something that you may not know. Mekodeshet. What does this mean? It's a Hebrew word and typically it is translated as sacred. Like a sacred meeting that they're doing. But as an adjective in Hebrew it means betrothed and when you look at it as being betrothed what is betrothed that is an engagement it is it is a marriage it's a bond that they're trying to bring together but it also stated though in the Hebrew language that they will try to marry the vision isn't it interesting then that Mekodeshit is to betroth to engage one another to bring together and what were they doing at this secret meeting at the YMCA, which stands for Young Men's Christi Christian Association? Jews, Muslims, and as well as Christians were all gathered together, sitting around tables, writing on paper, and we were told they were confessing their sins. This is the sky over Jerusalem yesterday, Saturday, October 1st, 2016. What you are seeing is an aerosoled metallic particulate reaction to atmospheric sounds. They're being trumpeted possibly by frequencies emitted by technological means. TTAs, Tesla Tech Arrays, located within a quarter of the Earth's mass away. It is definitely this type of reaction. But where are the trumpet sounds coming from? Are they merely emitted frequencies? What if they are not? What if you are seeing and hearing a sign from God? Has he ordered the first trumpet to be blown? Are these trumpets his? Just so that you know, Rosh Hashanah began this evening, Sunday, October 2nd, 2016, 
and ends on Tuesday evening, October 4th, 2016. Shofar is blown 100 times each day of Rosh Hashanah. But these trumpets were heard on the day before Rosh Hashanah, the Sabbath day, Saturday, October 1st, 2016. This circular chemtrail could easily have been laid down by a drone. But these trumpetings are audible. They are not microwave. The pattern is way too low in the sky. It stands to reason it's not made to create weather and it's not made for communications enhancement by the military. So why is that chemtrail there? And why are these trumpetings audible? If it is the first trumpet spoken of in Revelation 8, this is what we are to expect. In verse 7, the first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Lately, meteorites and fireballs have been falling out of the sky. Over the last few days, they've been rather numerous. The question then is, are these precursors to perhaps a larger body getting ready to do a flyby of the earth and raining down its hangers on? Or is it a technical deception? You decide. Guys, uh, subhanAllah, I did a vlog not so long ago about these, um, well, at least they were being passed as UFOs in Jerusalem. Uh, what they were, at least my position is that either they were one of three possibilities, two of which are military technology, either holographic technology or um, anti-gravitational propulsion systems. Uh, the third uh, possibility is that they are jinn uh, presenting themselves as um, uh, beings of light sentient beings of light and there seems to be this um, psyop world over where a lot of people are witnessing this uh, apparition in the skies and this footage doesn't seem to be CGI I've looked at it quite carefully it seems genuine enough apparently it was uh, picked up on the 1st of January around about 1.30 a.m. <laughs>
Okay, so let's let's take a look at this. I'm going to read this one more time. Stick with me though, because I'm going to show you something you probably have not seen. Now. It says, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars, and being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. All right, so we have a woman. This is a big sign. A woman, she's clothed in the sun. This is daytime, okay? She's got the moon at her feet. She's got 12 stars at her head. Leo's got nine stars and Venus, Mars, and Mercury. The only time this happens, I've searched the heavens years and years and years and years. The only time this happens. Three more stars. Nine plus three is 12. She's got this above her head, 12 stars crowning her. Uh, and um, she's, she's giving birth. Well, how, how do we do that? That's, that, that's what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something that you haven't seen about this birth right here. Okay, Jupiter is known as the king planet in our solar system. Um, Creation.com, okay, this obviously would be uh, Christian astronomers uh, are talking about Jupiter. It's the king of the planets and a testament to our creator. Okay, so this is the king planet. W what we're looking at is a depiction. Virgo obviously is uh, named after and is a picture of the Virgin, Mary. Okay, and Jupiter's the king. Well, Mary had a gave birth as a virgin to the king, uh, and uh, so this is uh, this, this. Now this already happened, but we see that the tribulation period is considered his his second coming is is like a second birth. He's going to come again, and um, in a really big way, we've got a really big sign in the heavens to show that the woman is about to give birth, and he is about to come. Uh, again, physically to the earth. Now, uh, this is uh, the the woman in Revelation 12 is the are the Israelis. It's the Jews. It's the Jewish bloodline. It was the Jewish bloodline, the line of David, that actually gave birth to our Messiah. Okay, he's Jewish. So this Virgo is a picture of a bigger picture of the Jews. <clears throat> and and our our Messiah came from them, came through that bloodline. All right, um, he is the Lion of the tribe of Judah as well. Um, now, what I'm going to show you here is something very interesting. That uh, let me I'm going to go back to uh, 2016, and I'm going to go. We're going to zoom in right here. And uh, try not to look at the artwork, but actually look at the constellation, the lines, and where the stars are. You notice that Jupiter right here is uh, is just about to cross this line and go into really the, the belly, the womb, so to speak, of, of Virgo at this time in 2016, uh, in November, November 20th, 2016. Now, I'm going to play this forward here, and I'm going to show you something. Stay tuned. Jupiter goes into the into the womb of Virgo, goes into retrograde motion, turns around. We're we're watching Jupiter. Jupiter is moving, and we are also moving. So the the, the planets appear to loop through the sky at times. Turns around and comes out. Okay, it it does this. It does a loop right inside of Virgo. Um, very interesting, very interesting. Now, uh, based on, I'm going to bring that right sort of back to the line, uh, just sort of bring it back another day here. Uh, so what we're looking at is November 20th, 2016 to September 9th, 2017. And this is the time that the, that the king was in the belly of Virgo. You're going to find this fascinating, I think. If we study gestation, which is, I'll just read the definition right here. Gestation is the period of time between conception and birth. During this time, the baby grows and develops inside the mother's womb. Okay? Uh, most people know that to be about nine, nine and a half month, uh, now, months. Now, right here, just a few days later, 
the entire sign shows up because we have to wait until after the moon passes the sun and we are and we have to wait until these planets also come adding three three more stars and that's what revelation 12 said is that is that 12 stars are at her head right here a garland of 12 stars on her head Uh, so just after she gives birth, or, or Jupiter comes through the birth canal, we've got the moon at her feet, she's clothed in the sun, we've got 12 above her head, we've got the king coming out of the virgin, all right? So, and it just so happens that this planet was perfectly inside of her for 41 weeks, exactly what a, a healthy baby would be inside of its mother. And there are some people that say this sign is not what it is. This happens on September 23rd, 2017.